Ooh, look at that forest cobra. So we got to see this forest cobra out of the enclosure the other day. But this is nice. She's nice and relaxed right now, not striking too much. So you got to see a real pattern, how beautiful she is around the face. And even though she is a very potent snake drop for drop, I know at the end of the day, she just doesn't want to be messed with. Look at her. That is such a beautiful snake. The saltwater crocodile, the largest reptile on our big blue planet, getting upwards to over 22 feet long. Look at him, he's like an animatronic when he eats. It is so crazy to watch an owl eat a whole mouse like it's nothing. Hmm. It seems like they really do give a hoot around here, but boy. Anyways, I know to do this. We need to go to the bathroom, just go. Right, what is going on beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. I'm hanging out with my best friend Bagoy. Don't tell Ziggy. Don't tell Barra. They're gonna get very upset, okay? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, beautiful people. What is going on? How you guys been? I know you're thinking, Chandler, where were you the past week? Why haven't you been posting that much? Well, on one hand, I got really sick. I had to take off time from filming. I had to take a break. I had to quarantine myself. But anyways, basically been keeping myself uh, occupied with all my animals, raising up the boy, taking care of Barrow, all the snakes, crocs, all the fun stuff. And also, as you guys know, there's been some, uh, there's been a bit of drama. We can't talk too much about it right now because of all the, all the lawyer business and whatnot that's going on, right, McGoy? But as soon as this is all settled and done with, we're going to make a big video talking about all the crazy drama that's happened around my property in this community. It's going to be a great video. So for now, we're just going to stick to the fun stuff, the usual stuff, conservation, education, getting up close and personal with beautiful wildlife, and learn how to laugh a little bit along the way. Isn't that right, little McGoy? Are you hungry? You want a little, you want a little something? I'm... One second, please. Oh, McCoy, there you go, buddy. Enjoy. That's that's uh, fresh, really fresh from this morning. You're welcome, buddy. So Bagoy, as you can see, has already started to grow out his feathers. Look at this. When we got him, he was just a fluff ball. And now you can actually see his feathers starting to come out. Are you going to eat that mouse? What are you doing, boy? What's really cool is if you get a good look at his feet, notice that his feet are so strange looking. Birds like owls actually have zygodactyl feet, which is the same as a chameleon, which means there's two toes on the front of the foot, there's two toes on the back of the foot, and this is excellent for birds of prey and lizards that want to grip onto branches like this. So, not just good for gripping onto branches, but also this being a bird of prey, having those zygodactyl talons makes it really easy to pierce into the hide of a rabbit, a squirrel, or a very unlucky mouse. Isn't that right, boy? Where are you going, boy? Look, he's like an animatronic when he eats. It is so crazy to watch an owl eat a whole mouse like it's nothing. And this owl is just about a month old, and about a month from now, he's gonna start dropping a lot of this fuzz, his feathers gonna start growing out. Right now, you can see like a lot of, uh, I don't know if you can see it right now, but there's almost like, like dandruff everywhere and it's basically keratin. Keratin is the same material as your fingernails and your hair. Bird feathers are made of keratin so when their feathers start to pop off this these keratin caps, these flakes, almost kind of like dandruff start to pop off the bird. So wherever this little dust ball goes he starts to pop off that keratin. I'm gonna watch out these talons when I move them too because even at this size this bird has a lot of pressure in those talons. Probably like 80 pounds worth of pressure in those talons. And when this bird is full grown, getting over six pounds, being the second largest owl on the planet, this bird will have over 750 PSI of pressure in those talons. So not something you want to experience, which is why I already ordered my falconry glove. Uh, we got our tethers, we got our whole entire system set up, uh, we actually ordered the anklets and jesses. And basically what happens is you put the anklets and jesses right here around the ankles, and it provides security to the bird when you start to train it to fly, because obviously with a bird like this, you wouldn't want just to go fly off hoping it would come back. You have to slowly introduce it to flying. So the good thing is we have my big screened in porch in my backyard. We can have basically a big aviary to fly my bird and that's secure. And as time goes on with the tethers, with the leashes, we'll be able to fly at greater distances and get this guy flying across the yard eventually with no leash at all, back and forth from myself to another keeper. So it's very exciting because this is not just a beautiful bird to look at, but this bird flies. This bird is one of the most beautiful birds of prey on the planet. So to be able to see this guy soar over your head in person would be amazing for the future of this facility. This is a great educational ambassador. And that's what it's all about, getting people up close with amazing animals, making you fall in love with them. Because believe it or not, in a lot of cultures, people fear owls. If they see an owl, they believe that someone around them is actually gonna die. 
In some cultures, they believe you gotta kill the owls, but in reality, owls are an essential part of our ecosystems. They manage our rodents, they manage our other small mammals, so those populations don't go out of whack, blow up, and then overuse the natural resources in the ecosystem. It is so important to have predators like owls, snakes, crocodiles. All these animals are keystone species to manage the other animals in our ecosystems, and that's why we gotta learn about them. Right, big boy? What are you doing? You playing with your toes? You want, you want some more food? Are you hungry? Let me. Look how he sits, look how he, he's so cute with his little talons. Look at those little talons, you got some pressure in there. Oh, oh, okay, okay, come on, we're going, let go, let go now. All right, beautiful people, I think we're gonna leave Bagoy. Right, Bagoy, you're gonna stay here and guard the kitchen? You want some more food? Give me one second, let me. Oh, this is starting to really hurt. How do owls do this? There you go, buddy. There you go, go ahead. There you go. Enjoy, Bagoy. It's, it's awesome to see you grow. You're such a cool guy. Look at him, he's like animatronic. You happy? Huh? Love you, buddy. All right, let's put him. It's okay, it's okay. Put him right on his perch because he needs to get used to perching. Come on, get your little zygodactyl feeding place. Good job, buddy. All right, beautiful people, let's go see how the rest of the wildlife at the facility is doing. <laughs> All right, beautiful people, we're here with my favorite animal on the planet. Favorite crocodile species of all 26 currently recognized. This is Anakin, the saltwater crocodile. You guys remember we got him about, I don't know, a month or a month and a half ago. He is growing like crazy. And I wanna show you how good he's looking right now. So this guy, he's not too bad. As you can see, he's right there. He hasn't really struck at me too much. He's pretty placid for a saltwater crocodile, honestly. Look at him. He is getting some size to him. Look how thick the base of his tail is. That is a fantastic indicator that he's healthy. He's got a lot of fat stored in that tail. And if this animal is ever in the wild and it dealt with a drought and it can eat for months, it can survive off the fatty tissue in that tail to live off to get that energy for survival. For the most part, reptiles like crocodiles rely on the sun for energy. So when they don't get food for months, it doesn't affect their energy levels like you and I. You and I have to eat sandwiches and breakfast to make sure we have lots of energy for the day. But the crocodile can go months without eating and just use nothing but the power from the sun to help it hunt a buffalo. Isn't that incredible? The saltwater crocodile, the largest reptile on our big blue planet, getting upwards to over 22 feet long. Look at that. Found in Northern Australia, Southeast Asia, this incredible species had such a wide range back in the day, but sadly, because of overhunting for their beautiful skins, now you mainly just find them in Southeast Asia and Northern Australia, where before the range was much, much wider. I believe they're actually found in India back in the day, but now you can just find them in Northern Australia and your Southeast Asian islands. What's crazy is, this being the largest reptile on the planet, and it being a predatory reptile, this species is recognized to eat people every year out in the wilds. So basically, people find themselves in situations where they don't realize they're in true danger. Some people think you can just look at a body of water, not see a crocodile's head for half an hour, and just assume there's nothing in there. But in reality, a crocodilian can slow its heart rate down to four beats in one hour and hold its breath over two hours. Some people even say four hours a croc can hold its breath. So most of the time, it's people making the mistake of thinking there's not a crocodile in a body of water, they go swimming and then become prey to the world's largest reptile. But the thing is, you gotta be aware of your local surroundings. That's all it's about. Whether you live in India around tigers, whether you live in Florida around alligators and rattlesnakes, you just need to be aware of your local environment. Know what lives around you so you can live safely and both animals and people can coexist. And that's what it's all about. Recognizing that these big, powerful beasts of animals on our planet are not just out to get us. We're all equals. We're all here on the planet. We're all part of the food chain, and we all deserve a special spot on the planet, even the saltwater crocodile. Look at that beast. Anakin, the saltwater crocodile. He is a beaut. He's going to get bigger and bigger, and I can't wait to see him grow and grow up with him. All right, beautiful people. We're going to head to the snake house. We need to clean a couple snakes, maybe go check up on other animals. I'll see you guys in a split. What are you doing around my parts, woman? Huh? What? 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 Hey! You! Where's your leash? Where's your leash? Where's your leash? Ain't easy being a dog trainer. 
Come here, what are you doing? What are you doing? As you guys can see, Bear is getting huge. She's no longer a little fluff ball. She's becoming a true bear, a true wolf killer dog, also known as a Caucasian Mountain Shepherd. Notice she's super wet. Uh, she has free reign on the property and she likes to go to the pond and jump into the deep end and go swimming on her own. So she really does enjoy to go swimming. What are you doing? What are you doing? Sit. Sit. Good girl. Good. Shake. 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 Give me the paw. Give me the paw. High five. High five. Oh my god, did you see that? Where's all my money? Where's all my money going? It's going into dog treats! I love you. All right, Barry, you stay here and guard the property. We're going into the Serpentarium to clean some doo-doo. Also known as a spicy meatball! Spicy! Spicy meatball! <laughs> Ain't easy being a dog lover. Ooh, I love you. Okay, let's go. Little Bobby! Guys, come check this out. This is Little Bobby, the American Crocodile. Look how big he's got. Oh, relax, relax. Oh my goodness, this is so cool because I don't handle him too often. So every time I do go to handle him, I get to see how much bigger he's gone. Look at him. This guy, his name is Bobby. He's an American crocodile and he's actually the son of Bully, the big male crocodile we went and caught at Gatorama and removed him from the breeding pond because he was not just bullying, but he was murdering other crocodiles in the breeding facility. So he had to be moved out. And this is his son, little Bobby. So little Bobby is a pure American crocodile and a confirmed male. So he does have, oh, relax, buddy. He does have a little willy, which is amazing, not just for him, but for the fact that I have a girlfriend for him. So now I get to breed a protected species here in captivity, making an insurance colony for the American crocodile, which was almost extinct here in Florida just 40, 30 years ago. We had almost 200, 300 breeding adults in South Florida. They were nearly going extinct. And with proper farming and breeding of the animals in captivity, now we have over 2,000 or almost 3,000 American crocodiles in the wilds of Florida, all because of conservation breeding. And that's amazing. That's what it's all about. Breeding animals in captivity for insurance colonies, raising awareness for species in their native countries, and also trying to raise funding for those projects. That's what it's all about. We've got to get together, not just to show you guys these beautiful animals, but to help raise awareness for the efforts to protect these animals in the natural habitats they live in. So let's move on. Let's get this light over here. And let's not forget about Bridget, the broad snouted caiman. Look how big she's getting. Look how beautiful she is. This is such a unique crocodilian species, the broad snouted caiman, because of their freakishly broad snout, their beautiful scales, their beautiful pattern on their skin. What's really crazy is since they're so beautiful, they're bred a lot in caiman farms for leather, for the leather trade. Boots, bags, belts, things like that. But what's really crazy is they're taking Yukari caiman and also Spectacle caiman, making hybrids with the broad snouted caimans so they can produce more product. The leather, the hides that they're selling. But the bad part about that is you lose the genetic diversity of this species when you create these hybrids. So that's why it's really important to actually breed these animals in captivity in zoological settings so we have insurance colonies for the species and we never lose that uniqueness to the species, the broad snout the beautiful patterns. This is like the jaguar of the crocodilian world. Look at that. And that's why we have to preserve animals like this so we can continue to see them and continue to have them in our natural habitats where they belong, where they are the keystone species that manage the other populations. Oh, she's so snappy. All right, so I'm gonna close this up. We're gonna move on. There's actually a lot to do. The black mamba went to the bathroom. The rattlesnakes went to the bathroom. The cobras went to the bathroom, but I think what we'll do today is clean Big Bertha, my big six foot long monocled cobra that I've had since I got my license. I've known this cobra since she was a little baby because a friend before me raised her up and I got to experience that with them. So she's definitely one of the original snakes of the Serpentarium. Let's go give her a cleaning. Ooh, look at that forest cobra. See, we got to see this forest cobra out of the enclosure the other day. But this is nice. She's nice and relaxed right now, not striking too much. So you got to see a real pattern, how beautiful she is around the face. Those black stripes. She is such a gorgeous cobra. The longest true cobra on the planet, not considering the king cobra, because king cobras are not true cobras at all in their separate family. All right, so Big Bertha, she's in this enclosure right here. We're going to take her out, clean her enclosure. She actually shed her skin. She needs some fresh water. So let's 
make sure she gets nice and taken care of. All right, guys, let's open this up. We're gonna check her out, make sure she's nice and healthy looking, but also give her some fresh water because she went to the bathroom in the water bowl. Clean out all that dead skin. Let me get that height out of the way. There we go, look how beautiful she is. She's always had a little bit of like a nose rub going on, but it has healed over time. And every time she sheds her skin, she grows and she heals any blemishes on her scales. So that's the thing, whenever a snake gets hurt, they actually continue to shed to heal themselves. So, if a snake had a big gash on the side, you notice it would start to go into shed pretty soon just so it could start healing itself. These snakes are incredible and resilient when it comes to healing. All reptiles, they're incredible healers. What's going on? Oh, relax, relax. So as you can see, she's very defensive right now, but she's looking really beautiful after coming out of that skin. All right, so we're gonna use the hook, lift her up, and put her inside this holding receptacle that looks a lot like a trash can, but I'm, I'm guaranteeing that this is a snake holding receptacle. All right, so now we can check out what's going on in here. The glass is a little bit dirty. It needs to get clean, so we'll deal with that. We've got snake skin everywhere. That's a big cobra, look at that. Look how big the belly scales are on the shed. That's really cool. I'm actually gonna keep this for any guests that come in the future and they can have that skin because it's always cool to take a little bit of this facility with them back home. Might not be able to take back an actual cobra, but at least the cool shed of a cobra's skin. So cool. I'm gonna throw that one away though. All right, let me get some fresh water because there's, there's dookie in here and this is disgusting. I, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. That's, that right there, that's a, uh... take a look at this, dude. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Is that a spicy meatball? Oh! You thought it was over, but it's back. Spicy, spicy, spicy. Say with the group. Meatball. Mamma mia, pizzeria snakes in my house. Ah, snakes everywhere. Ah, they like the mouse. What? Spice, spice, spice all around. I have snakes that are spicy all around. Yes, sing with me, Ruth. Spicy, spicy, spicy snakes. Spicy, spicy, snakes. spicy, spicy snakes. Do spicy, you know spicy, where the snakes spicy, come spicy, from? They are spicy. spicy snakes. Yes, snakes. 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 Watch snakes. me break down. Snakes. 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 All right, guys, we gotta take this stuff seriously. Grab this poop out of here. You know, let me bring the holding receptacle closer. There we go. Oh, sorry, I got the holding receptacle confused for the trash can because they look so alike. But that's a snake holding receptacle, and this is a trash can. Get it right. Get in here. Relax, jeez. Look at the venom on the glass, look at this. Childish Gambino just struck. He just oozed venom over the glass. All right, so let's put that hide back. Uh, I got fresh water, but I ended up dumping a bunch of mulch in it, so let's get even fresher water. on chandlerspotlight.com for all the best merchandise. What you thought I left the promos for the end? No, I'm putting it in the middle of this episode this time. Make sure you go on chandlerspotlight.com, get your merchandise. Allison, don't give a schnit. Chandler's Spotlight. Black Mamas, King Cobras, Crocodiles, everything you love, everything I am passionate about. Subscribe to the channel, share it with your mother. Don't forget to check us out on Patreon for exclusive content not seen anywhere else in the stratosphere. And let's continue on with the snake cleaning. There we go, the formula is almost complete. All right guys, let's put this monocle cobra back. Just had to do a couple stretches, we're good to go. Look at this snake. She is oh so defensive, but I have known her since she was a little worm. And even though she is a very potent snake drop for drop, I know at the end of the day, she just doesn't want to be messed with. Look at her. That is such a beautiful snake. You know, a lot of people out there would look at these venomous snakes and wonder, why would you even waste your time trying to protect these animals? Why would you even waste your, your life trying to put yourself at risk for animals like this? They are so beautiful and misunderstood that people just don't realize, not just are they important for our ecosystems, but they're important for humanity. The component venom is a protein a protein that can be solidified and used for medications that can save people's lives, blood thinners, all types of medications that can help people. They used Gila Monster Venom, Gila Monsters, these 
Venomous lizards behind me, they've used their venom to target cancer cells and breast cancer. So to think that these snakes have no value, why risk your life working for them? Why risk your life, and when I say working for them, I truly mean working for the animals, because I'm basically a made for wildlife. I clean up their mess, I feed them, make sure they have fresh water. I am a servant to these animals, and the reason for that is because they're incredible, beautiful, amazing animals that can do things that we couldn't even fathom doing. There are biological advancements in life that we really need to see as a solution to society's problems, specifically our medical problems. There are so many values to a venomous snake's venom that can be used for humanity and our benefit. So think about that next time you don't want to give love to a cobra, or think that next time you try to kill a snake in your yard. It's not just protecting you from all the rodents coming into your house, it's actually probably going to serve a purpose to a friend that's sick in the hospital one day. So always think about that. Let's get this big monocle cobra right back into the enclosure. Nice and easy. Man, she's getting big. Look at her. She's going to get one of the king cobra's enclosures. As soon as we can continue on to build out the Serpentarium, these king cobras will eventually get their big walk-in enclosures, and then she's going to be able to live in one of these six-foot vision cages. So everyone's going to get an upgrade. As time goes on, this place will be more and more of a professional Serpentarium. It's going to look amazing, and I can't wait to share that with you guys. I'll see you guys on the next one. Don't forget to check us on, on Patreon for exclusive content. Don't forget to check us out on ChandlersWildlife.com to get your own merchandise. Don't forget to rep us. You guys supporting us on Patreon, supporting us on our clothing website, Website, it really helps support the big goal of this facility and everything we want to do conservation education and just having a good time I'll see you guys in the next one stay beautiful stay safe and most of all don't forget to follow your dreams and stay passionate and everything will fall in line for you Sorry, I got the holding receptacle confused for the trash can because they look so alike, but that's a snake holding receptacle and this is a trash can. Get it right. <laughs>